establish economic outlook. That's very important because we are neighbors and uh, it's, uh, we believe that it's more of a tradition of being close to each other, the food, the language, especially Bengal, you know. So the habits are the same, the people are the same. It's just that we are demarcated by a boundary, nothing more. And uh, Mr. P.D. Roncha is the president of Association of Corporate Advisors and uh, Executives. I was one of both are absolutely one of the best. They have two very renowned bodies, sir, doing extremely good job for the development of the business ecosystem. And uh, Mr. Ritik Mukherjee, who, well, I call him the Superman. <laughs> but we all know. He is, he is. Yeah. Right, yeah. right. Uh, so he's one of the best uh, business journalists in the city, and of course, my younger brother. And uh, I am from, we both are from Nova Real Time Solutions. We are a communication, business communication firm. So we keep on doing this uh, business ecosystem program, uh, probably on our own way to help uh, grow an entrepreneurial, you know, uh, some kind of an entrepreneurial pra platform in the region. Thank you everyone for being here. And uh, Ritika, it's all yours. Uh, we would like first Mr. Kishan Kejriwal from the Katwa Chamber to say a few words, sir. Good evening, everyone. Dr. Rahman, economic advisor to Bangladesh. No, no, that was wrong. Former governor. Former governor. Former governor of Central Bank of Bangladesh, Mr. Mukherjee, renowned business journalist, CAPD Rumtaji, President Association of Corporate Advisor and Executive, members of the press, college at the Calcutta Chamber of Commerce and ACAE, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. It is my honor and privilege to welcome you all at an open house discussion on Indo-Bangladesh economic outlook. I heartily welcome Dr. Rahman, former governor of Central Bank of Bangladesh, who has kindly accepted our invitation to grace today's session as a guest of honor. So we are greatly honored to have you here with us today. The impact of the, this chamber has been immense in shaping the way of Kolkata developed. We have with us today an eminent economist, Dr. Rama, to share insight on the Bangla economic outlook. I am sure the deliberation and discussion will be enriching and fruitful. Once again, I thank you all for coming here today. I welcome you, sir. I would request Mr. P.D. Rumta, the president of ACA, to say a few words. Thank you, Golgandu, and uh, I welcome to each one of you on this occasion. Just for the knowledge of all of you that uh, we as an association, first, uh, thanks to my president, Ed Chamber. Since I am vice president, my president, and uh, I am uh, representing here association of uh, corporate advisors and executives. We are an association of professionals and uh, oldest association in the eastern part of the India in, of the country. And we basically have an objective to bridge between the business and uh, the uh, statutory compliance, statutory requirement. So with that objective, actually, we had associated with uh, this forum and uh, this program. So I think my all the members present here will immensely get them benefited with this uh, discussion. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much again for supporting the initiatives. So we can start the coming the program, sir. Good. E good evening, everybody. You know, today's topic is Indo-Bangla business outlook. One way of looking at outlook from the other side is looking out. So once you look out, the first country that we get to say is Bangladesh and vice versa. When Bangladesh also looks out, it's India on the other side. Uh, you know, India and Bangladesh are not like two countries, it's like two mahalas, two paras. And who better than Dr. Atiur Rahman to speak about this subject? An extremely erudite person, a person who can move from Tego to trade and foreign exchange nonchalantly. Dr. Atiur Rahman was the governor of Bangladesh Central Bank, but he is known and he also wants to be known as a common man's banker who actually kind of transformed banking in Bangladesh, extremely down to earth person. He doesn't want to talk about his other capacities that he operates in, but all I can say informally that uh, power that we looks up to the person for policy and other things is Dr. Atiur Rahman. 
whenever it comes to whenever it comes to business economics and trade so welcome dr ramon uh, the format of today's session is just give and kind of introductory remark then all of them are you know, they are also very illustrious in their own right so they will throw up some questions whatever problem they are facing challenges they are facing then you will have to respond okay thank you ritik for introducing me with so many kind words thank you thank you for that uh, mr president uh, the vice president and other uh, members uh, of the uh, uh, the chamber of commerce and also uh, uh, guests uh, from different professions uh, i really want to thank you all uh, for being here uh, uh, to interact uh, uh, on an issue which is so important at the moment uh, uh, <coughs> particularly uh, at a time when the world looks so uncertain the global business also looks so uncertain uh, uh, people only talk about these days in a in a uh, disasters not potentials so i think uh, this evening we will be talking more about potentials than about disasters so that will be uh, 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 fine uh, as you have already heard that i'm really uh, you know from the morning i'm hopping in and hopping out in the sense that uh, in the morning i really spoke for 2 hours on an international conference the participants from india new zealand england as uh, uh, sri lanka uh, uh, others we are participating and we are also talking on an almost similar issues you know i was talking about new economics in the new context you know so uh, 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 that was uh, uh, after finishing that i got into the plane and then came here and i couldn't even go to the place i'll stay and so i'm straight here so that's so uh, uh, exciting that and i i'm so amazed that uh, 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 so many people of i would say uh, importance and uh, 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 professional significance uh, are all here uh, i really uh, won't give you much but i learn a lot that's my expectations from you uh, economics finally is a matter of uh, uh, you know uh, interconnectedness you know the economics if not put into an a context of culture society policies and politics you know uh, it remains uh, only for a few but as you all know you know uh, good business people uh, you know you know, uh, the market has to be for many, not for a few. The moment market becomes only for a few, then all kinds of, you know, you know, problems arise. But if the market is for many, then not only you are working for equity, but also you are working for your own gains. The demand grows and uh, uh, the market also grows, you know. The today's uh, that Bangladesh and India are doing so well, even in this global uh, meltdown. I would say the meltdown has already started uh, only because of the domestic market that these countries have. Actually, both the countries have. So uh, our growth essentially originates from our domestic consumptions at the moment and domestic demand. So I thought. This is very useful in at a time yeah, to talk about our own strength, our own uh, uh, in our, in our uh, uh, potentials, so that we can face this challenge. We really don't know uh, when the war will end, the Ukraine war will end. So we really don't know what will happen uh, 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 to the geopolitical tensions that are bringing up in, a, in the uh, South China. So we really don't know what will happen 
and to the globe, you know, you know, if there is a you know nuclear intervention. So there are a lot of tensions all around, and all these are really having impact on the you know you know uh, uh, quantity and the quality of business that you are all doing. Uh, the cost has gone up. Uh, the COVID-19, you know, uh, has. Uh, 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 disrupted the supply chains so much as you all know uh, because you are deeply in, in the businesses so you know the cost of you know you know transport particularly shipping went four or five times up and uh, because uh, 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 most ships were not plying people still had to be paid and uh, uh, so once they start flying, you know, uh, things could have normalized by now. Then came the war in February. You know, that was a war. We really didn't know that this is coming. I didn't know at least. I was in Japan uh, to give a talk in Hitsubishi University. After that talk, I landed in uh, Singapore, uh, uh, where my uh, you know, uh, uh, daughter stays. So once I went to her house, she said, Baba, you cannot get out. I said, what happened? No, no, the COVID is on, you cannot get out. So I, I just stayed a few days with her and then came back and then finally embraced COVID, all of us. You know, you know, so that's the, and, and you know that and the world is never again uh, the old world. So uh, uh, the COVID and, 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 and the Ukraine a war, together has created further uh, in a, in a, in a, uh, disruptions in the supplies. You know, the, the economy could not pick up you know, or the recover as expected uh, because of the war. You know. uh, but this is not the end of the story. We were even fighting for that and doing something and we probably could have done far better. But then, the COVID had its fallouts, as you all know, in most countries, including ours and yours. The central banks, uh, you know, in, the, in, in the, the, the Western central banks, particularly the US central bank, the Fed, they really put so much of liquidity into the market just to keep the economy floating around that place. Trillions of dollars. So, obviously, there has come a time to mop that up. You know, you cannot keep on pumping. So you are mopping up that uh, liquidity. The moment the Fed started tightening the monetary policy, you know, the raising the uh, policy rates, they have already done six times over the last one year. You know, this raising their uh, 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 basic interest rate or the primary interest rate or the policy rates, they call it. And they are not stopping. They said, we really don't know when we'll stop it. We'll continue to do that, you know. Of course, recently, the Bank of England and, and the European Central Bank, they said, we'll rethink. But they have not also said that they will stop it. Now, what happens of that kind of monetary policy for us? The, 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 they raise the rate of interest, that their treasury bonds return goes up. The more it goes up, the investment they have done, or uh, you, many of you may have invested in Indian Treasury bond or Bangladesh Treasury bond, Bangladesh. So these are becoming less competitive than the U.S. bonds. So the dollars flying back to U.S. and the more it flows back, the dollar becomes stronger, and the, the more dollar, the dollar becomes stronger, you know the currencies are all around the world. You know, they become weaker and that has also an impact on the inflation that they are fighting, you know. Of course they are fighting, everybody is fighting against inflation, you know. But their fight is creating our fight even more difficult. Just give you an example, you know, India uh, uh, rupee lost about 10% or around that, but we lost more, 20 plus. You know, so ours is, is even worse. And these are the, uh, you know, the exchange rates 
uh, it matters for the items we import because 40 percent of all the trade really takes place in dollars not in rupees or in yen in, in dollars so the more you import you know the more you spend really rupees or taka so this is and that items if those are consumables it it really gets into your food basket and then it hurts the inflation goes up and we call it now imported inflation the inflation which we are witnessing is called imported inflation and that inflation is killing <coughs> the small uh, uh, earners you know the, the the your workers you know they have to really buy everything uh, at a higher cost you can tell that these are imported items my worker will only buy the indian items no if there is a shop you know if the rice uh, price your rice price uh, is uh, something and the imported rice price is something there will uh, sometimes you know in a mix up and the cascade effect will come in so if if you have important items and the domestic items there will be a price effect of that so that's why you know this inflation is all pervasive and really impacting even the middle class middle class is being affected badly because they have to buy many things which are imported you know in bangladesh is even more difficult because you at least have the you know you know the wheat and the flour which you can afford but we need to import we used to import it from ukraine unfortunately you know we are having problem there you know even now some ships are coming but the cost is six times higher so that is immediately impacting our food basket so we need to also buy uh, rice you i used to buy from india and cambodia uh, 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 and different places but the india have their own uh, you know priorities i don't blame them sometimes they need they stop it they say no we are not going to export you know so here lies the strategic interest of the two country now let me come back to that so if if we really want to survive and uh, better and win win so we got to cooperate you know and we can have our you know regional trade rearranged in a faster so that we can cope with this global global pressure pressure like imported inflation or uh, you know you know uh, the bulging uh, 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 trade deficit that we are watching our import prices are you know uh, you know the values are going up and the export and the remittance together cannot match that. So we are having a current account deficit. The more you have current account deficit, that will have more pressure on your taka and or your reserve. India has got bigger reserve, so they could defend their currency, sell so much of dollars from their, their reserve. But we have a smaller reserve, even then we are selling as much as we can to defend the uh, currency and both the countries are following the same strategy you know, you know we are defending our currency to remain you know stable so and we can learn from each other you know how much how they are doing and we do as a central banker i can tell you as a governor we used to cooperate a lot you know the indian governor and bangladesh governor sri lankan governors we used to work a lot in fact the swap arrangements that we have created as governors you know that was used by the Sri Lankans with that swap they got uh, money from India they got dollars from Bangladesh and, and we really helped them survive for a while but but this was not a full story so I thought we can learn from each other and we can do a lot uh, uh, finally what I would say that both Bangladesh and India will do better in this crisis mainly because of the indigenous kind of economic solutions that we are pursuing. We do pursue domestic economic uh, in a, in a rejuvenation. Our economy is 
essentially you know, indigenous. So we will have strength in the sense that our strength is our agriculture, our farm economy. Both the countries, you know, they do produce the food which they can afford and they can uh, keep the, you know, uh, food markets stable. And as you know, next year, 23, everybody is telling, including the World Bank chief, the IMF chief, the UN chief, and every FO chief will be a difficult year for food. This will be a food crisis. There will be a food crisis. Even our prime minister has been hinting at it that the global uh, there could be a there could be a global famine. Actually, the, particularly uh, the developing countries of the low income countries will have serious problems. She's not talking about Bangladesh. She only said that every inch of the land has to be cultivated so that you know we face this. Uh, uh, you know, crisis and Bangladesh has been doing well. I tell you, this almond production that we have uh, 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 now, we are we are harvesting. There will be an additional uh, uh, production of 1.3 million metric tons of almond this year. So that that is a good news that we she has been pushing. And next will be boro, as you all know, the boro production with the, uh, which is a, a winter crop. And we need to work hard. And for that matter, we need to give electricity to our farmers. We need to give fertilizer to our farmers. And also, we need to give credit to our farmers. And here, I think that both countries can really uh, work together. Particularly, what I hear, I don't know, many of you can update me, that there will be an Indian pipeline going to Bangladesh on diesel. Are you aware, any of you, that there is a diesel pipeline going by land pipeline, you know, where the diesel will be uh, 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 going and the trade will take place in seconds. You know, you don't have to wait in Petropole for ages to take the diesel to Bangladesh. The pipeline will take the diesel shortly and this diesel will be so useful for the irrigation. You know, the entire northern Bangladesh, you know, will, will really benefit from a decision like this of, of the government. I'm really thankful to both the governments for innovating. The Prime Minister, our Prime Minister, the other day was telling that if this uh, starts working, that the entire North Bengal, there will be no diesel problem. And again, uh, this is so important and, and this is happening. Secondly, uh, uh, we already have uh, the uh, electricity trade already in place. Indo-Bangladesh electric grid trade is already there, and we want more. Uh, and uh, uh, and uh, but again, for that matter, we need to have the grid, uh, the infrastructure, and there many of you can help us in in having quick uh, in a in a in a uh, infrastructure development for transmission of the electricity. Probably electricity we can produce uh, with with a uh, uh, together. But then this has to be given. You know, this has to pass through. And for that matter, we need this distribution network, you know, the grid network. Here too, you know, uh, 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 we can work together. And that is a huge potential. And again, uh, as you all know, we will answer later, but I'm giving you the glimpse of the potential that is happening. The Padma Bridge, which has started, has been a game changer for the regional trade, as you all know. And recently, not only Padma trade, the Kalna Bridge, which is in, in, in Natur, from just a few kilo, uh, a few, uh, about 100 kilometers from that uh, uh, Padma Bridge, that bridge has been opened recently. And because of that bridge being open, you know, the distance between the Petropole and Dhaka has reduced by about few hundred kilometers. That gives you an extra edge. You know, the cost will come down, you know. And again, there is a potential. The rail lines are, uh, will, will, uh, will, be, will be opened very soon over the Padma Bridge. And this old Shalaida Kulna railway lines is already on. So we will connect this with the Padma Bridge via uh, Kulna. And 
Once that is done, sir, things will be so easy for Indian uh, in a, in a, in a, uh, 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 commodities to pass to Bangladesh at a very lower cost. And again, the moment the business is done, it will be Bangladesh has to do it. I must appreciate this. Only difficulty is that you have to do it in your own way. First of all, you have to land border, the genius gulo jache, track gulo kuna time, puno din, kuri din, pochi din, aki jache. This, this side, this side, they are operating in some HS code different, other side is operating in different, and Bangladesh, some importers, exporters, they say ki amader kuna ekta specific code dewa, it is a bit not matching, it is creating problem. So, is there anything going on that we should have a common harmonized code so it should be more faster? Yeah. Any any uh, uh, sensible person will say this is possible, but again, this has to be worked out, you know. Uh, and since you are such a uh, veteran in in the area, you should help them out actually, you know. And together you can together you can you can sort it out. You know? And now, as he said, you can get it done in two days. So if it has come down to two days, uh, so let's let's work more on the other ports so that we can also have it on two days, you know, on other ports as well. This is possible. Uh, uh, if I remember, you know, uh, 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 this is possible because of the associations they have in the in the you know, say the petrol uh, uh, associations. Uh, of chambers, uh, local chambers, and I know many of them. They come to my uh, workshops and seminars. They bring in problems, and I call the government officials to join my seminar. So we solve the problems in the seminars. You know, so we can continue that kind of interaction if you want. That we will have a specific problem. We now work on the connectivity. You know, a lot. Uh, the uh, the Ministry of Commerce, additional secretary. Uh, 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 I, I, I always involve her. She is the one who looks after all this connectivity. Whenever I organize a workshop like this, we get in an uh, additional secretary from the Ministry of Commerce so that she helps us all. So we'll do that like that. So that's how we will have to you know, you know, you know, sort this out. So, uh, a tremendous change in the I'm happy to hear that. You, you spoke about the production of almonds. Is that the dry fruit almonds? So can you elaborate something? I mean, that looks very, very interesting because presently it's coming from uh, other places. Bangladesh is agriculture, you know, if, if you follow, uh, I, will, I will request you to read only one person called Shaikh Shiraz. Maybe you have heard about this name. Uh, he runs a television, he has got a YouTube called Shaikh Shiraz, you know, you know him. So he talks about the, all the modern uh, fruits and uh, things that are growing in Bangladesh. The other day, he showed me a photograph, you know, that in many of their old uh, production activities in the, in the rural areas are fading, giving a space to dragon fruit, to, you uh, know, uh, in, a, in a, uh, the oranges, to, you uh, know, uh, uh, nuts, almonds, and uh, all those new things are coming up in Bangladesh and modern fruits coming up. Uh, but even today, you know, Bangladesh imports a lot uh, on, on, on apples and others. But again, uh, 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 at the moment, uh, the agriculture going through a very transformation, modernization in a, in a big way. And, uh, and Bangladesh probably in in a few days a few few years time will be one of the modern uh, uh, agriculture producers they are already having uh, you know you know uh, uh, farms like netherlands you know you know of that quality uh, so uh, a lot of potentials going on in agriculture sector as well and agriculture is one area bangladesh really can boast of and and uh, you can join hands there as well because you have also, uh, good examples of, of uh, uh, diversified agriculture. Uh, on the northeastern part of agriculture, is a very natural agriculture. So you know that that part of the, they produce the fruits, the vegetables, which are very, very natural. 
And on the other hand, we have uh, uh, you know, strong industrial uh, 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 enterprises like Pran in our ACI. So together we can, we, can, uh, we, can, we can have joint ventures or we can have you know, uh, benefit from the cooperation of the uh, agricultural uh, processing. Uh, in the border area, so a lot of things can happen actually, you know, because potentials are great. Just the other day, I was having a talk with the KOPT chairman. He was suggesting that few days ago there was a pilot kind of thing, ships uh, carrying Tata steel steel bar to Bangladesh to this moment. Yes. Uh, while coming back, they carried some agricultural products from Bangladesh. So that can be another. As he said, things have changed. Maybe we don't know yet the ground realities. Things have changed so much. You know, you know things are really moving ahead. What is the tourism you see between us? You know, the tourism business between Bangladesh and India. Whenever I hear people, you know, they go to other places for tourism. Why can't we visit your country? I'm sure there must be certain that is, things. That is, that is your uh, problem. No, no, no but <laughs> could you highlight something? No, no. Can you, can you possibly highlight something? Good spots in uh, Bangladesh. Bangladesh tourism is flourishing so well, you know. We have this Cox's Bazaar, which is one of the finest sea beaches of the world, you know. And uh, uh, we are now putting up direct flight from Dhaka to Cox's Bazaar, even we can organize flights from Kolkata if you want, you know, this is possible. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, we also now have a lot of resorts, you know, after the Padma Bridge, you know, many uh, resorts are, are coming up around that bridge, you know, you know, and so if somebody wants to go from Kolkata, they can just spend two days and come back, you know, those, this is happening. The entire Bangladesh is now connected, absolutely, if you want to go by even by your, uh, a, you know, uh, uh, rail, uh, Bangladesh is easily reachable, you know. And now we are having a rail lines from Chittagong to Cox's Bazaar. So if somebody wants to go by rail, you know, from Dhaka to Chittagong to Cox's Bazaar, it will be so easy. Uh, so Bangladesh tourism industry is growing because Bangladesh middle class is growing pretty fast. So. Uh, uh, Hundreds and thousands of people now in mean, domestic tourism in, in, in Bangladesh. The other day we heard that there were so many tourists in Chittagong hill tracks. They had to stay on the street. There was not enough spaces. So that is the kind of interest they are having. You know, Some of those tourists are spilling over to India as well. Hundreds and thousands of them are coming here, not only for medical tourism, but also for real tourism, you know, you know here uh, they move around Benaras, uh, Benaras, then, then they go to uh, uh, different parts of India. So uh, I thought here is one area, you are absolutely right, here is one area in a potential area of uh, uh, development where both the countries can really have joint ventures in resorts and also uh, operators, you know, the cooperation in tourist operators. And Bangladesh, as you know, is a very welcoming country. In terms of hospitality, I tell you, you cannot beat Bangladesh. You know, people are so welcoming, you know. You know even if, if I don't know you, we happen to be in Dhaka a couple of days, they will, you know, Riptik probably will agree with me, they will drag you to their house for a dinner. So that kind of people Bangladesh are, you know. so. You know, very, very, you know, the Bengals, you all know that these are very food-loving people, you know, you know, they always uh, 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 really enjoy this kind of, so that is a huge potential on culture and tourism. And again, the culturally, we, as you said, we are on the same space, uh, particularly uh, thanks to Tagore and Akazi Nazrul, we have, we have the heritage of the same music, same kind of, you know, in a, in a, in a, Bengalism, I would say, in terms of language and, and in terms of our uh, cultural interests. So, uh, uh, the authors in, in India uh, and in Bangladesh interact quite well, you know, you know so uh, I thought there is a huge potential for this cooperation on the cultural and tourism front as well.
Why don't you have food chain? Why don't you have vegetarian chain in Bangalore? We too want to vegetarian food. I don't get one very well. You know, so let's have a vegetarian chain. People will welcome you. You know, you know we have uh, other chains, but not vegetarian chains. You know, we, we can have more. Cosmetic manufacturing, oh. and you know the Indian cosmetics are loved by the world, whether it's UAE or Russia or European countries. And <coughs> I've seen recently, you know, the import duty of uh, you know in Bangladesh is 110 percent, which is highest among the, all the countries. So, uh, what initiatives we are taking, sir? This is an area you are absolutely right. We need to rationalize our tariff, you know. But the problem is, you know, the government wants. Uh, uh, in a revenue uh, at any cost and and by asking that you know sometimes the national board of revenue are forced to go for higher in a in a you know uh, rates uh, on items you know like this uh, but uh, now that we are getting into an IMF program so one of the objectives of the IMF program is to you know you know improve uh, the National Board of Revenue, digitize it, and with all the policy measures so that if these are rationalized. So this is a, an issue of rationalization and uh, we will be working on it. Good evening, sir. Uh, I represent a women organization and Manjula here is far also with me. So uh, one question which I would like to put to you is where do you think we women can come in into this India-Bangladesh uh, trade or business? Women dominate Bangladesh and also uh, uh, businesses in, in Bangladesh. A lot of women entrepreneurs have come up. As a governor, I made it a point that the women entrepreneurs uh, you know, you know, flourish. And uh, we made it a point that we used to create a, you know, small and medium enterprise special funds to help the small entrepreneurs. And initially, I made it a point that 15% of that fund first should go to the women entrepreneurs, then only the men can access. So we made it a point like that. And a uh, lot many entrepreneurs have come up in Bangladesh because of that. I made it a point that each of the banks will have a special product on women, women-led entrepreneurship. And, and they have done very well and they're doing very well. So if you come to Bangladesh, you know, if you meet the bankers, and now almost 50% of the bankers, 40 to 50% bankers are also women. So if you talk to these bankers, you will know what kind of women activities are going on. And our prime minister is a great you know, in a promoter of women enterprises. She has put in you know, almost all the you know, you know, visible officers in the in the rural areas and the district areas, all women. The deputy commissioners are women. The police SPs are women. The DIZs are all women. So these are these are you know, this has created a kind of impact. And we from the central bank, we pushed women entrepreneurship funding. So together, it's, it's coming up. So you will you will you will find your you know you know you know. Uh, uh, friends around, you know, on the same page if you come to Bangladesh. Thank you. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, good evening, sir. Uh, there is one market which is only run by women. Are there like, yeah. about 3,000 uh, shops there? There are many, many, many uh, uh, kind of hubs like that. Mm -hmm. Now, thanks to COVID, a lot of women entrepreneurs have come up and they have now you know uh, market and uh, you are talking about uh, a, 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 a initiative taken by the ministry of child and yes. uh, mothers and they, this is they are pushing it the speaker current speaker Shirin Sharma, she was the minister there mm -hmm. i remember i went as a chief guest to one of our programs around that time and we now have a marketplace where only women entrepreneurs Really, uh, 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 there is in Dhanmondi. It's in Dhanmondi, they have created that. Uh, but, but more than that, the, during the COVID, we saw the you know women uh, small enterprises coming up from here and there. You know, uh, our uh, 
uh, students who were, were uh, uh, you know, came up with new initiatives on, on uh, 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 women uh, enterprises. Uh, and again, uh, uh, we requested the banks, because uh, I'm no more a governor, but all the deputy governors and the others regularly talk to me. So one of the deputy governors is very, very proactive. I said, why don't you help these guys, you know, these this, uh, women? So, sir, what can I do? I said, these women, you know, they do small businesses, but they don't have a trade license. You insist on a trade license. How could they give you a trade license? So forget it. I said, sir, what will you do? I said, take their bank account and their national ID. That two instruments should be good enough to start the business. Give them the money. So then we created, with our my suggestion, they created a nano Nano credit, they call it. Nano credit, small credit. So what they do, they all have to have a mobile financial account, you know, like you also have it. So that account will have some footprints that how much you are selling. How much. So the uh, artificial intelligence will find you out if you ask for a loan, if a lady asks for a loan, that how much you are capable of. So in three minutes time, they check it and then they approve the loans. And that's how a bank and a mobile financial service together with the help from the central bank without a trade license, hundreds and thousands of those entrepreneurs are now getting money. So these are the kinds of things we pushed. And I tell you a story of a Morjina who is from Jesu, a lady, you know, a widow. She really, I remember when I was a governor, she came to me. She said, sir, I want to do something. I said, what do you want to do? She said, I want to be a farmer, very good farmer. I said, go ahead. She said, then I want to have a, uh, produce vermi fertilizer, you know, vermiculture. So, uh, uh, and sell this organic farmer to the others. So she started that we gave about 1 million taka, I remember, from the CSR fund. We organized from the Corporate Social Responsibility Fund. Uh, from uh, some banks and also gave some from the central bank. So together we gave that seed money to her. And would you know, she has become a very successful entrepreneur. She has created another 200 women entrepreneurs in her area. And in that area, you know, hardly a chemical fertilizer is sold. You know, the, all they are going, you know. Although you need blending, you know, you cannot have 100% chemical fertilizers or 100% you know, organic fertilizers. So they need, they need to blend it. And she was telling me the other day, sir, all my fertilizers are being sold, you know, and I don't have any problem. So those kinds of initiatives are being taken in Bangladesh. So these are very grassroots. You remember I said the capitalism has to be for many, not for a few. The moment it becomes for a few, it doesn't. Survive. It is for many that we need to work on. Thank you so much, sir, and thank you so much for promoting women there. <laughs> and the organic farming is definitely yeah. much required now. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yes, no yeah. Different aspect. Since many years, Bollywood movies are banned in Bangladesh, and I believe in 21 or somewhere, the pre producer association they decided and requested that, that Bollywood movies should be allowed over there. We are all sitting all the time. Well, you will see, but we cannot, it's not officially going there, although Fibos and Saki Wall are famous in India also very much, but we have to see now. No, no, you, you are absolutely right. This is a part of those trade hurdles that we are facing, you know, regulations, you know. Uh, uh, we will have to work that out. Same thing if, if, if I tell you, we see all your channels, but you cannot see yeah. here our yes. channel. So these are kind of, you know, you know regulatory hurdles that we will have to overcome. Uh, uh, so if, if the total ecology, the trade ecology, you know, works for all of us, then uh, these are small bits will fit in. So don't worry. Just thinking a lot at this point of time, as she pointed out, if for some reason, some aspiring woman entrepreneur is not being able to do whatever she wants to do here. Can she go and would she be welcome equally <laughs> there, uh, taking advantage of those, you know, shops and other things? I, I think that again, you know, you have to have that kind of uh, uh, 
franchise. Otherwise, you know, someone like any any lady going there and will have will have a, a difficult fight. I tell you, you know, not from the, the her co you uh, know in a, a uh, entrepreneurs, but the you know uh, uh, the conducive environment may not be there. So I think this will take time. Nothing to be less. Uh, first have the exchanges, uh, build a confidence, only things will follow. Uh, there will come a time uh, when uh, probably uh, 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 the region will flourish as a whole, you know, and it's doing already. And uh, even uh, during this difficult period we have seen, it's so easy to you know, you know, uh, uh, import something from India than from Britain, no? so in, during the, so uh, uh, this is a you know practical economics, and I think practical economics will uh, you know you know overrule uh, uh, the difficult economics. Uh, very good evening to everyone. Uh, sir, my question is uh, at Bangladesh, in Bangladesh. What is your concept for highways and tollways, like uh, toll collection and highways? What is your concept at Bangladesh? Okay. Uh, we do have. Uh, uh, some tollways, uh, but not many. You know, say for example, the Padma Road. You know, that's a, almost a European road. Like you know, there we have put in, uh, we have put in uh, 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 tollways in some of the flyovers. Not all. So these are slowly emerging. It's still at a very uh, uh, in, in a nascent state. It's still not coming up that way. Uh, uh, probably it will take time. It will yes, take time. Uh, my question is: Is uh, Bangladesh supporting tour collection and uh, uh, tourway system, uh, highways and road safeties and yeah. classify vehicle classifiers? Is they, Bangladesh they, thinking about this? They is thinking system? about it, working on it, uh, uh, and again, uh, again, as I told you, uh, uh, this will take time. You know, it is they are working on it, but at the moment, as you all know. We are, we are, we are, we are in a in a global crisis, you know. So we cannot push too much, you know. At this hour, we need to help our people survive, you know. Those who are really suffering uh, under inflation, you know. People who are really on the margin, you know, having food uh, as their first priority. So uh, we'll have to be a bit cautious and careful in pushing the entire agenda. We'll have to go step by step, you know, in a familiar first, then move uh, slowly. And one more question, sir, uh, means uh, in vehicle, what is the language used in uh, vehicle, number plate? Is in Bengali or English? It's, what it's, is the it's, it's Bengali, but then we are working on this BBIM, uh, 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 Motor Vehicle Act, as you know, there we have the international language, you know. I think we will have to leave you, but of course, without giving a chance to Sunil, I cannot. I don't know. I, Dada, uh, Amar, actually, you know, we are working with the startup ecosystem. Um, and I just wanted to understand ki how can the startup ecosystem, and uh, how can the startup entrepreneurs from uh, India, you know, especially, how can they uh, have opportunities for uh, you know, collaborate, more uh, collaborate with more with Bangladesh, you know? Maybe can we have a joint council of startups with between Indian startup itself in Bangladesh is in a very very nascent state. You know, we have only one startup institute uh, ideas called the, the it's ideas in the Ministry of ICT. They have a small project on uh, startups. The central bank itself has a fund on startups, and they are asking the banks to encourage it. So once the individual startups really come up from within, then they can have joint ventures. Say for example, you know, the Pikash, which is the biggest uh, mobile financial services in Bangladesh, started as a startup. You know, it, 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 uh, I really patronized that, I must say. So it came up, now it is having funding, uh, share support from Alibaba, uh, IFC, and others are joining in. So once this, really come up, they would look for uh, their partners. So let them grow and have uh, the partnership uh, developed. You know, so it's, it's still too early uh, to invite uh, formally that you can join the startup. This will grow automatically. As, uh, some of them are 
working pretty well and others are joining in. Say, Daraj, you know, is, is an e-commerce e, e uh, site. That there you are having the joint ventures. Uh, but again, uh, uh, the regulation on, on e-commerce is still not well developed. So we'll have to develop the regulations and then we can think about it. Thank you so much. I think Maybe the definition of startup is different because yeah, yeah, yeah. otherwise the examples he had given earlier, yeah. in India, they were those women entrepreneurs, they would have been called startups here. Yeah, in India. Yeah. He mentioned repeatedly about how demand grows and then growth in demand can create market. I think in economics there is also another theory by J.V. Say which says that supply creates its own, own demand. So now there is a supply on the other side of the room. I can take a look at the <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure demand will also grow. No, it's a very hard day, long day. That's why I really don't want to. No, no, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. I think Kamila yeah. will do the last part of the tour then. Yeah, absolutely. So we are, thank you so much, sir. It was so enriching. That we got to know so many new uh, things which we didn't know about you know so let's let's the conversation goes on we will Absolutely. continue the we'll continue. The country, yeah, yeah. Yeah. life will, will improve as so we move. i would uh, thank everyone for being here and uh, may i request uh,